Alright, what is going on everybody? I'm back with another uh, OpenTunes video. Today we're going to be covering just the basics on how to use OpenTunes just to get around the UI and what things are. So first off, we're going to go on the, the tabs here. So the first is basics, which is basically, <laughs> basically, you can do most of your animation here. Um, you have your styles, which is colors and open tunes. Let me just, uh, if you just draw that, create the layer right there. Um, now, if you have, you have your styles right here. So you can select uh, this color editor, style editor. You can change the color in which you draw. And as you can see, guys, um, I'm clicking on the tools over here. This right here is the brush tool, the eraser tool. I, you to, you're going to be using those very, very often, I, I assume at least. And um, I am using a drawing pad, guys. So if you guys don't know too much about drawing pads, then um, I might make a video on them just to so, show you guys which one I recommend, which ones um, I will tell you not. I don't really have any suggestions that are that you should I don't have any things that you I don't suggest you should get. So any drawing pad is really um, suitable for this. So um, and using a mouse, as you can see, will be difficult because you won't get some advantages such as pressure sensitivity and your hand isn't as accurate as uh, your hand on a mouse isn't as accurate as, as your hand with a pencil, as you can see. Um, it's just easier to do with a drawing pad um, because I don't know. These two pictures both look <laughs> relatively uh, mouse drawn, but you know, you can just do a lot more like a uh, very intense, like very not intense, but very detailed sketches. Anyway, um, this that's the basics tab. This is the cleanup tab. Cleanup is sort of like the things you do um, when you're inking, sort of. I think uh, maybe that's what that's for. maybe that's what that's for. Drawing is for basically getting your drawings and not focusing on animating stuff like if you want to draw a very detailed nose or something like that if you want to really get the nose the nose right you want to get the nose right and then you can go into the drawing tab and you can not worry about so much of your frames and all that stuff and then um, you get the drawing tab so that's a very detailed nose so let's do a little shading in here alright so and then you got the animation tab which is your which has your effects um, effects schematic right here and I will be going over this in another video because it's a little bit complicated and um, but it does help. It does help. It does help with a lot of like the effects you see in shows, such as like blurs and stuff like that. So I'll teach that in another video. Um, this is your timeline, your or your X sheet here, and your palette is where you got all your colors and stuff like that. Global palettes. Uh, this is very cool. I want to go over this really quickly. Your global palettes and project palettes. You can make your own palettes for if say if you had a character, um, and you want to keep their color scheme the same. And then global palettes is uh, I get I just can't. This is so nice, the thing that they did with the gold palette is they had like a skin palette. If, you, if I tap on this, where is it? It comes up right, oh, right here. It comes up right here, and then you have all of these skin tones right here, all four you already set out. And they're very realistic looking. Uh, they have blush tones here, sort of a lipstick kind of thing, and I feel like that was very, I was I was heartwarmed when I, when I found this, when I found this out. And the way you can add those is this, um, if you just, uh, uh, right click and then copy and then paste it on yours and then you're good you're good you have that color now so um now the X sheet this is the sheet where you basically is your frames it's um a little different from, from other animation software where usually you're going from left to right animation this one's kinda up and down sort of the traditional style with the way they used to do it and um it's not it, it's a little bit hard to learn at first because you're not used to it um, but after a while you'll, you'll be able to you know it's actually just the same, uh, the same timeline, but just vertical. So then, if we go to browser, we have all of these uh, folders that you have, um, and this is where you can get, you can import sounds, you can import uh, backgrounds and stuff like that. But you can always import it by just dragging and dropping. And I'm not really sure what farms for, so um, I'm not really sure what that is. So, but we're not, out of, it's, it's not really crucial to the animation process if I didn't really need it too much. Um, not saying that I'm. Again, I disclaimer, I'm not a professional animator, but um, um, I'm just here to teach you guys about the software because I noticed that not a lot of people know about it, and there's a lot of tutorials on how to use it, and there's also a lot of confusion. So I did draw these very, uh, very amazing smiley faces. I mean, look how look how happy this person looks. You gotta be some, you gotta be some kind of like suspended in some kind of happiness to look like this. That is happy. I'm gonna give him a little. Oh, basically the only reason I disappeared is because I drew in a new frame. And I uh, will go over some of the settings. Uh, I guess that would be helpful if I were to go to preferences. And um, let's see, X sheet. What did I? I want to show you guys what I did to make that happen. So, so basically, guys, when you draw, it will create a new layer. And the layer, there are certain types of layers, and I will teach you how to um, make the certain types of layers. Let me. Where's layers? X sheet. 
Um, let's see, where is it? Actually, drawing. Okay, so if you go here and you go default level type, tunes vector levels, tunes raster levels, and raster levels. So um, you also do have scan levels, I believe. I don't know why they're not here though. So if you, t I usually use tunes raster level because it's it has the most features and raster level doesn't really have as many features as that and I'll explain that later sort of just just certain tools you can't use with that um, tunes with the regular raster level and tunes vector level if you guys don't know what vectors are they're basically just you know they're basically just uh, levels that um, if you you know how if you zoom in on a raster level let's see you see all these pixels well if I were to create a, a vector level here let me just uh, let's see make a new new level and if I were to call it DP whatever it sort of written names levels for you do that right and then if I were to do the same sort of figure eight shape oh that's too big let's decrease that size the same sort of figure eight shape but with a vector level then if I zoom in then the line will always be smooth which is um, a big difference between vector and raster is because vector can be exported in multiple formats and it will not lose its quality Ras raster if you export if you draw the raster line in 720p and you export in 1080 you may see some pixels and it won't look it just won't look as nice so um that's the difference between vectors and rasters back to basic use um those are vectors and raster levels so i usually set my default to raster levels and if you just draw then it'll create and name a layer for you but if you want to create your uh, your own levels which is basically just layers um well more of col the columns are more of the layers but you have to create levels in order to draw on them I'm not a, levels are really just the frames that are in a layer. So if I do this, like that, and then just keep drawing, yeah, you know, I'm doing different frames. Um, I believe that they did this because, um, and you can activate under skins by right clicking. I believe that they did this because if you want to have different, um, if you want to have a different lay, like a certain level, but you want to have it in a different animation, then it's easy to do that. So more on basic use. Let's see. Let's just erase this. Or just get rid of this actually so yes if you draw then it'll automatically create a layer which is good um, so you don't have to really do much and uh, you can create and name them if you like to if you're making like a professional thing you want to be organized that you can do that by just uh, right clicking right here and then do new level and you can name it and everything so yeah also with that we have the let's see what else do we have um, we have the eraser and brush tool which are basically the tools that you're going to be using for everything now again with the tablet you can set um, pressure sensitive pressure sensitivity um, right here or it says pressure and uh, you can drag this a little bigger so this is the minimum size and the maximum size so as you can see since I'm using a tablet um, I don't know if it's working too well right now hold on let me see yeah so um, one thing I would recommend is plugging in your tablet before your uh, you open open tunes because then the information will be um, the information every tablet will be there as you can see my pressure sen my pressure sensitivity I can't even say it pressure sensitivity isn't working but um it will if I were to possibly restart open tunes or maybe met some things with my computer or my tablet drivers are not working currently but um usually you'll be able to set your pressure sensitivity and I'll probably make another video on that so um with that said you have the eraser tool right here all these tools I will probably get to I haven't really used most of them because I don't really need them but um, with that, let's try opening an animation. Let's see if we have anything. Uh, perspective fight scene. Let's just, let's just discard this. So basically, this is one of the, one thing that I made a while ago. I featured it in the first video, sort of. And it's just like you can go frame by frame, um, doing animation, just drawing on the same layers. Right now, this is the horizon layer that I used to bend because I was adding a perspective view, and then this is the guy running on it. And um, also, as you, guys, as you guys can see, the camera can move. So if you right click and then do select camera, camera one, and you can use this tool right here, which is the uh, the edit tool, which is just what you use to move um, certain layers. And the camera counts as its own layer, so but that's the way you have to select it. Uh, otherwise, you select it in, in the effect schematic, which I will go over in another video. So and you can move this camera, and you can set keyframes for it. So let me just do Control Z to do that. So did I set it? I think I just set a keyframe for it. Um, so I did back, but um, as you can see, the camera moves with the character because I want the character to stay on screen. It was r rather difficult to keep it in within um, the bounds of the camera at first, so I just moved it to go along with the character. So um, you can, you guys can use this little keyframe tool, which uh, 
automatic with which will create a keyframe keyframe automatically let me just get a new a uh, new scene and discard this one because I didn't change it so if, let's say I had a, a a face oh uh I meant to do that on this <laughs> layer one if you had a face right here and you may gave him eyes and a smiley face so um that if you were to select the camera now camera one the camera sort of on its own layer but you can't really see it on like the X sheet so um, what I would usually do is just I would set a keyframe at first that's the first keyframe then I would move to another layer and I think I would have to select the camera again um, unless it says camera one here and then you click a keyframe and move it and as you can see our camera moves like if I drag through this our camera moves like that alright so that's pretty much it for basic use um, you guys don't really need too much of the um, the details but that's basically what you're going to be able to do with the software and you guys can sort of take off by that but if uh, you guys want just an example oh one thing I forgot to mention to you guys exposure is how long a frame lasts for and if I want this thing to last for uh, um, let's say I want it to last for six frames then I'll just click and drag this load tab right here and um, yeah so as you can see if we go in our camera view right here if you press this button then the face looks like it's moving but it's really just the camera so um, with that said, uh, one more thing before I go, I have to tell you guys about the delete key. If you guys, if I just select on those frames and then select delete, then it automatically deletes them just because I didn't know that at first. I wanted to make sure that you guys did. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be back with more opportunities tutorials later. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.